Baby. What? Do you have a calling right I now? I do. What's I have calling? the best calling in the whole world. What is it? I am the board newsletter specialist. Oh. And so, but we don't do a newsletter. It's just the, uh, the, the program. Weekly, yeah, the, the weekly, weekly program. program. So every single week I get to church early. So I'm always on time to sacrament. And I go and I print out all the things. And I always put a weekly joke. And people love my joke. People come up to me like every Sunday. They're like, great joke this week, Mimi. Like I write it and I don't. But anyway, it's the best calling because I get to stand there and welcome everyone to church and give them their program. That's and so I fun. Love it. Oh. What are your guys' callings? I'm on the uh, activities committee. Nice. Yeah. Actually, that's my, fun. And my girlfriend's the committee leader. Ah. Yeah, so. Yeah. Heavenly Father knew what he was doing there. No, yeah, kidding. nice. Uh, Honestly, yeah. though. Uh, what, what about, about you? you? I'm a second counselor in the Sunday school presidency. Oh, okay. Nice. Do you do anything? Yes. Cool. Yeah, I do. <laughs> just <laughs> kidding. Whenever I hear... Mr. Activities <laughs> committee person. I, I don't do anything. I, I do the it. most. Okay, let's just settle it there. I you, probably... do, you do do something every week. That's impressive. <laughs> I used to be a nursery leader. And I know, I remember. Oh, nursery leaders, that's fun. they get the props to the nursery leaders. That man. is so hard. <laughs> that's fun. the like, tough that's, I love it when you're in a new ward and you get called to be a nursery, like when you're a newly married couple, you know, oh, in a yeah. family ward and they call you to be a primary teacher or nursery leader. And I'm like, that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> they just start like, have kids, have kids. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I think the opposite is like, oh, kids are crazy. <laughs> like, I don't want any right now. I know, I feel like it stresses <laughs> them out more. Like, it makes them wait longer. Uh, it's spiraling out of control. Well, look, don't panic, because they're like animals. They can smell fear. Have you guys ever said no to a calling that was presented to you, offered uh, to you? I haven't. I have, I have not yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, okay, me neither. Why do you think that is? Well, we should first, Talk for about, people like, that, are, that, yeah, that haven't seen our show or are not familiar with the Latter-day Saints, what, what's a, what is a calling? Calling, because oh, oh. it's kind of an ominous yeah. word. Like, like I'm being like called. Like you're being called. Like you're the chosen one. You are the chosen one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like they're, it's not that. They're, they're calling me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I must go. I must go. <laughs> um, so, I'll answer my own question. So essentially, like in every congregation, which we call a ward, there are like responsibilities that need to be. Filled because mm -hmm. everything is like volunteer work. All the, the nobody's paid in the ward to do what they do. Uh, whether you're a teacher or a nursery leader or a primary teacher or uh, a missionary, a mis ward missionary, or on the activities committee, mm -hmm. or there are so many different callings, um, and nobody gets paid for them. So your calling is just this responsibility that uh, the bishop or someone in the bishopric. Uh, offers you based on the inspiration that they receive. Yeah, I, th I like the word calling. I like that, that it's not a job, you know. Right. It's not, It. I guess responsibility is, is is okay, but even then it's like, it's just, it's it's calling is like, it's an invitation. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. to like, here, we, like, as a church, you know, like, okay, we need help for the church to be organized. You have skills, um, we would love if you could help us with those skills. That's how I feel like a calling is. Um, I think that wording is, is important because if they were like, okay, this is your job in the church, then instantly it's like, if I don't do this, what happens, you know? Right, like, am I going to get fired? You're fired, 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 fired. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. You can't get fired from a calling. But uh, another thing, too, is not only do callings help the church run, it makes sure all the classes get organized and everything, but it also really helps the people. And in my opinion, I think that's why we have callings more than the other part, is mm -hmm. that it can truly help you. It gives you the opportunity to serve other people in your ward, and then they get blessings from that, too, from you helping them. Right, and, and then, then I and also, you, yeah, and you grow. Exactly. Yeah. And then also another calling that every single member of the church has is to be a ministering brother or sister. And so and you can have you can have multiple callings, but like mm -hmm. usually people have a calling in their ward and then you have a calling to minister other people in the ward, which means you just basically be their friend and go visit them every once in a while. Yeah, just help them feel more comfortable in the church. Yeah. So how is a calling received? 
So there's this chicken called the Chicken of Callings. Ooh, deep doctrine. And okay. every week it lays an egg, and the bishop cracks open that egg, and in there is a divine revelation saying what oh your calling gosh. should be. This is true. That would be so cool. <laughs> I testify. Like the sorting hat. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's what I was thinking. Head. But I'm imagining like a fortune cookie. It's like <laughs> you will. Be, can you, you walk into the bishop's office and he's like, "This is your calling." <laughs> So no, that, no. That's um, not how it works. Though. So what really happens? <laughs> what really happens is you've got a bishop, uh-huh. and he sits there. Who's like and, basically the equivalent of a pastor, like the leader of the congregation. Right, and he literally sits there with like a list of all the like the things that they need help with. You know, like all the things we've mentioned: teachers and even people like to help with the kids. I'm pretty much babysit, you know, primary teachers, and um, <laughs> like music. instruct the young music, minds instruct, okay. of the next generation. Right. <laughs> Babysit. Excuse me. <laughs> um, but he sits there with a piece Kyle of paper, <laughs> and and then they go, okay, this spot needs filled. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, who in the ward does not have a calling already? Who could help us with this? And probably a lot of names come up. Mm-hmm. And then they think of all those people, and then they pray, and then they feel, okay, I feel like this person is like could do too really good in this. Mm-hmm. And they invite that person into their office, and they say, hi, brother or sister, mm-hmm. um, I f- feel like I should offer you this calling. Do you want it? Better wording than that, you know, I'm being kind of vague. And then they can go, yes, Bishop, I would love to. Or they could say, no, I'm sorry, but like, I really can't. And he goes, awesome. Yeah. Then he finds somebody else and he yeah. goes back to his list and he prays again and tries. And like, that's kind of the process of filling these spots. And yeah. it can also be someone who already has a calling too. Like That's someone true. can get called like and just switch their callings. But a misconception that I had when I was younger and even just till recently is I thought that people were called to be something like whoever's called as a teacher would is the best teacher in the ward and that's why they're called as the teacher. Oh, or this person is the mm-hmm. very best at like activities and that's why they're on the activities committee. And I have always loved like leadership. Like growing up I love speaking. I'd love to be a teacher but I've never been called as a teacher even though I think I could do like right. I could do pretty well at it, I think. Um but it's just it hasn't happened. And so I would always wonder like oh my gosh like am I not good enough like to be a teacher? Sure. But it's really not about that. It's not whoever's best gets the calling. It's I think a lot of it is a learning opportunity for the person who gets called and it gives them the opportunity to sometimes like get out of their comfort zone or you just never know why. But I do believe that it is through divine revelation because I know I've sometimes been sitting in class and I'm like, oh, well, this teacher like maybe isn't the best or because you know what I mean? Like, right. I mean, there are because there are going to be teachers who aren't very great. (laughs) Right. And I'm like, and I'm going to be honest, sometimes I'm like, oh, well, I could have probably taught this lesson better than that person. But that's not what it's about at all, because who am I to say that? God d- didn't choose them and think that they would do a good job in it. Right. So. so here's a question for you. A lot of people struggle with with this situation that I'm going to unfold for you. But like they get a calling and mm-hmm. some callings are more demanding of time and resources and energy right. than other callings. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the bishop simply isn't aware of, you know, how busy someone's life is. And oftentimes mm-hmm. someone will have very little time already, but then they'll get this calling that requires a huge commitment and it's it's the straw that breaks the camel's back for them and their life is just falling apart Mm -hmm. because they can't they can't fulfill their calling like Mm -hmm. they should be and uh, they're they're not doing it justice or or due diligence and uh, and so then they go back to the bishop and they ask to be released from that calling Mm -hmm. um does that mean that it wasn't divine revelation that they received that calling? Or how does that sure. work? I think um, kind of going back to that weird analogy, that weird joke I made earlier about the chicken thing, I think some people believe that callings literally do come like a like an email from God saying, I want right. you to call this person to fill this spot because this is what they need. Um, and it just doesn't work that way. I do believe it can happen. I do believe a bishop yeah. can receive like an inspiration and feeling that I think this person would really be blessed by this calling. Yeah. And and probably it's true. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think there are some situations where like a calling is harder than others, but that sacrifice will be worth it. Or sometimes I think callings are given literally because the bishop's just like, I just need a teacher for this class. Mm-hmm. And this guy would be a good teacher. Or he'd be a bad teacher, but we just need a teacher. You know, I've literally yeah. been in situations where like I've that's happened because spots just need filled sometimes. Like, it's not not everything that happens is this, oh, death and destruction if you don't complete the commandments <laughs> of God, you know? Like, because 
it can feel like that, but I don't think that's always the case. So in the church handbook, actually, which is what the bishops use, you know, like as their guideline, it says, um, each calling should benefit the people who are served, the member, and the member's family. And although the service and church callings require sacrifice, it should not compromise a member's ability to fulfill family and employment responsibilities. Hmm. So, yeah, if a calling comes, I actually have a friend um, growing up, and his dad was asked to be a bishop, mm-hmm. and, and he declined. And I, and I remember thinking, like, what is he doing? Like, God needs him as a bishop. Don't, <laughs> doesn't he know that God will make it happen? But, but then I realized this kid, they had nine kids. You know, from like oh, teenagers and younger, gosh. you know, he's working a full time job. His wife is also working a job, you know, like there and there was so much going on in his life that like I and and, and once you better understand what the responsibilities of a bishop are, I'd be like, oh, no, like, there's no way yeah. he would have had to quit his job or get rid of a few kids, you know, like it just. Yeah. <laughs> and but the but the bishop probably like when they were called, you know, the leaders of the church don't know everything that's going on in your life. Right. Yeah. And so you have to kind of have that personal relationship with God to be able to say like, oh God, like yeah. this isn't really what I can do right now, you know, or, and, and that's okay. And a lot of people think that because the bishop receives divine revelation, he shouldn't have to know everything that's going on in your life. Mm-hmm. And it's the role of the spirit to fill in those blanks for him. But again, God, God wants to work with us. He doesn't want to work for us. So when it comes to things like callings, I think that oftentimes, because God is trying to teach us, he's trying to like help us grow, not Mm -hmm. just lead us along with a carrot in front of our face. Yeah. Uh, When it comes to callings, I think that a lot of the time uh, it's up to the bishop. He's, he's got, he's at his own devices to uh, make the best decision he can. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times he'll take those decisions and he'll go to the Lord and he'll say, Heavenly Father, I think this person would be good for this calling, and this person would be great for this calling. Sound good? And God gives them the thumbs up, and then the bishop calls those people, and we see how it works out. Right. Right. And if it doesn't work out, then that's revelation for the bishop. Like, he needs to change (laughs) his decision, you know? Exactly. So it's, it's just, like you said, like, it's not, you know, a divine fortune cookie that comes down. Right. It's definitely an and it, and I guess my my like advice is take a calling seriously. Like if you're invited to do something, yeah, don't just shove it off because like oh I'd rather be watching TV. You know it's an awesome opportunity to serve in the church, to to sacrifice for God, to grow. Like it's definitely not something to be taken lightly because um, callings are awesome. You know, yeah. and I know I have a friend who is uh, has a calling that they really don't enjoy. But they just feel like, but they've prayed about it and they feel like, okay, but I feel like I should keep doing it because it's going to help me grow. Mm-hmm. And, and I respect that. And you know, I think yeah, that's, that's awesome. cool, you know. Yeah. Um, but like we've talked about, like you don't like, how, like be smart like about where you are in life, how your relationship is with God. And a lot of people who are new members of the church are, the moment you're baptized, are invited to have a calling in the church. Mm-hmm. And it's not because we think like, okay, you know everything, now you can be a teacher or you know everything, now you can be a missionary. It's more just because it's healthy to have responsibility. You yeah. know, and it's easier to feel like you're a part of, like, the group when you're doing something. That's a great way to meet other people, yeah, especially exactly. if you're on, like, a committee. Mm-hmm. You meet a lot of committee members. Yeah, so. and and if you are new in the church and they offer you a calling and you just don't feel ready, you can say no. Right. Because if you, because I know some people who, they said yes because they felt obligated, like they had to, and then it was too much. Mm-hmm. And then they left the church really quick because they were like, oh, I feel like there's all these expectations and I can't do it, so they a just stopped of, coming. guilt. Yeah, and so, like... Um, you don't have to say yes just because you feel like you're obligated to or you're a bad member if you don't. Right. It's an invitation from God. It's not like God is gave told the bishop to give you that calling because you had to take it. It's always still an invitation. So don't feel pressured. And there will always be more callings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And don't get mad if they release you from a calling. Yeah. It doesn't mean you <laughs> it doesn't mean you sucked at it and so they got rid of you. So we wanna know what your experience with callings has been. What's been your favorite calling? What are some experiences that you've had that you've really enjoyed uh, in your calling? Let us know in the comments. If you have any questions, let us know. Follow us on the social medias. Subscribe. Subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, have a good day. (laughs) Bye. Is it hot in here? Yeah. Okay.